wanted to uh, expand a little bit more on detail normals since uh, we were looking at it on the stream the other week and just kind of highlight some of the extra things you can do with it and how you can utilize it to uh, help you keep uh, your materials cheaper as well. So let's uh, let's let's look at this alien egg, huh? So okay, right off the bat, we've right now just so that you guys are aware, there's a clear coat on this clear coat shader. So we're getting a little bit of uh, strange reflections going on. We're getting dual uh, reflectivity essentially, or a dual specular pass. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a we've got a bake normal on here, and there's some albedo information in there just to break up the surface. But uh, I think right now this is coming in as a was it a 10 1024 for the normal bake. So if we go in here and we look at the uh, the egg normal, let's see here. No, it's a 2048. So if we if we lowered that right, that's when you start getting into the the territory uh, where the resolution starts to become an issue. And I know you guys, everyone's like, how do you make something look high res? Even if like, especially if it's a really large large object, like a, a building wall or something like that, right? You can only have the materials sh like showing so much uh, before it starts to look pretty rough. So if we like, if we make this like a, a 512 instead, right? And we just save that and we go back to this. It doesn't look too different, but uh, it'll get blurry fast for you, right? And you can see up here, especially in the details up here, that's uh, quite a bit blurrier. So a lot of that sculpted information is just kind of getting lost. Um, so that's when, when detail normals come in. So if we, if we look at the egg material, what I've got going on right now is I've got a, a normal map and then I'm using a blended uh, or blended angle corrected normals and then lurping between that and a, uh, Oh, well, actually, the the blended normal is the where the detail normal is coming from. But I'm doing a few extra things here, which we'll we'll touch on here in a second. But uh, the detail normal, what I do is I bring in a a really really small texture. That way, I can keep this as a parameter uh, input that I can expose. Uh, and when you expose that, you can bring in another normal map. Which I think for this example, we're we're actually using what they have in. Uh, in here, let me find it. Actually, if I turn this on, it'll show. We can just look up uh, cobble. So there's a cobble uh, normal map, right? Which you can see here. This is actually what we we're using in the stream as well. So if we bring in a cobble, cobble normal map, you can see, okay, you're getting all this nice resolution. And the nice thing is you can expose the tiling on your detail normal and just tile it up. So let's, let's just tile it up super high. And you know, like as you get closer to the surface, it just kind of holds up its detail. You're not worried about the larger normal anymore. And it's just about that information. This is about as far as we've, we've taken detail normals in, uh, in the other, uh, videos on the, on the channel, as well as like when we're, we're on, uh, Twitch. But, uh, when you look at this, it's like, okay, it's kind of everywhere and a lot of the times maybe you'll want to expose a parameter to control the strength of the normal so that you can tone it down if you need to. And I think that's actually where detail normals get even more exciting. So, uh, so if we go into substance painter, we've got our, we've got our model here, right? And, uh, if we look at user zero, I'm basically, uh, we probably need to set this to user zero with that black. So you can see, so here's the, the mask, that I'm actually generating in, in uh, Substance Painter in order to create a mask for the detail normal. So if you look at that in the shader in, in Unreal, let's go back in here, we'll just put this up here. Uh, what I'm doing is I've got a, a flat normal and then the detail normal, and but now I'm lurping between this flat normal and the detail normal that we brought in with a mask, which is in this uh, texture that I've packed. The way I've named it right now is DCA, DCA underscore mask, which is detail normal, clear coat, and then AO. So if we look at that in Photoshop, uh, looks like this. Don't mind the padding. Uh, there's no, I don't have infinite uh, dilation on the padding. So you're getting like horrible seams 
in the final result in Unreal. And this is just so I can test everything out and just get it in before having to sit there and export everything out and whatnot. But uh, uh, you can see some clipping as well. But you can see, okay, so we've got the bakes in here. I've got the ambient occlusion in the blue channel, and then I've got the a clear coat mask in the green channel. But then in the red channel, I've made it white just for this demo. So let's undo it and then save. We'll go back into Unreal. And now that channel, instead of being completely red or completely white for the red channel, um, we'll go in and we'll re-import we'll re that. And you can see like, how you're getting that nice uh, extra detail where you need it. And the other really nice thing is with that, like that, you can also um, still control the tiling independently. So if you can see where it's all at. So if we need a really high res, we can get in there and get those details exactly where we want them. Um, to better uh, use this in the shader like this, I would say you probably also should expose the strength in the normal as well. That way um, you just have the full control of being able to strengthen it to its highest point in the normal strength while still being able to uh, have a have a mask that controls where that detail is coming in. And it's it's super like this is crazy handy. And I would, I would like to say that I think um, when you're making an asset inside of a game, you're going to want that detail normal to be present on like 90% of your assets. It just helps sell the surface of whatever the object is. And if you can also uh, have a mask like this, like sure, you're paying for a mask, but you're getting that extra level of detail where like, say you have the the grips on the, on the handles of a of a bicycle that you're seeing that um, the grip pattern is there, right? And then if you have a mask that can wear down where the grip, uh, where the grip has been worn down by hands holding it all the time, that can be done with a mask. And then you'll have like a per pixel control of it instead of just like a, a straight up detail normal. Now, the, the other reason I wanted to bring this up is uh, I haven't set it up in here. Uh, maybe I should do that at some point just so we can have a, a really good demo of it. But uh, right now, these are two separate meshes, right? And let's say, let's say I want a detail normal on the alien face hugger that is not part of the, the egg. Um, you could do that, but you wanted to keep it combined as a single asset. You could do that with vertex colors and then split the detail normals between the two, right? And then you'd have a detail normal for your red channel and a detail normal for your green channel, for example, uh, as well as independent tiling for each of them also and masks for them. So that way you're you're keeping a, um, a single uh, draw call instead of two. This is especially useful when you have like a, a uniquely baked asset and then you go in and you create essentially red, green, and blue vertex colors for individual parts where you want detail normals on some and detail normals on, uh, on not on the others. You could also use a black and white uh, for the, a grayscale of a single channel in the, in the vertex color and then control it that way. So a whole lot of control where you don't have to bring in a mask and you can just have a detail normal. But you should be using detail normals on a lot of things. So uh, I just wanted to bring that up. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.